All right, everybody, welcome back. Um, I want to do uh, another round of talking about unit testing. I have some other videos, but I'd like to take it another another go at this and try to do a better video. And so I want to talk about unit testing. And one of the things you're going to see is uh, this nice graphic here that shows unit testing uh, going to acceptance testing. And this comes from softwaretestingfundamentals.com, their article on unit testing. And so it's a type of software testing. So we're right, we're testing our code that we're going to work. Where we're looking at individual units or components of the software. So we're trying to make sure that every part of the software works the way it's supposed to. And it's kind of the smallest, it's like the, the base unit of testing that really is a good thing to have uh, when you are writing your code. You want to make sure that all of the individual parts work as intended. And so, um, so the unit in unit testing is just the smallest testable part of a software. And it usually has one or a few inputs and usually a single output. So in the case of what we're doing in Python is we're doing procedural programming primarily. So it could be an individual program, but we're really going to look at functions or if you want to call them procedures. If you're using object-oriented programming, you would take a look at a method. So we're going to do this as testing functions is how we're defining the unit testing. Okay. So in order to do this, I want you to be able to not only write a unit test, but write the code to test, right? So we're going to do a very basic example. We're going to just write a function to get the area of a circle. And we're going to test it with various inputs and make sure we're getting the output that we uh, are expecting to see, okay? And in order to do that, we need the, the, the program that has the function we're going to test, but we also need a separate program that runs all of our tests on that software. So we're going to create two files, and one we're just going to start, we're just going to call it math functions. All right? And um, we're going to save that at this point. We're not going to do anything with this for a while, because what we're going to do is we're going to do what's called test-driven development, also known as extreme programming. We're actually going to write the test before we even write the function that's going to be tested. And of course, it's going to fail. And that's what we want it to do. So on this side here, I'm going to create tests, capital T, math, functions, dot pi. We want to keep them very similar in title. Okay, so we're going to test, we're going to save these into a folder. So we're going to go ahead and create it. So if you find your folder where you're working on your projects, just create a new one. We can just call it unit testing. And we're going to paste right there and click save. Notice, let's go back to the folder so you can see this. At this point, we have two files here, test math functions and math functions. So the test is going to run the test for it. Now, the structure of this unit test in Python is something that's going to look a little foreign. Um, part of it's because we're going to use um, object-oriented programming to create it. So you might see some new features here. The first thing we want to do, though, is we're going to import a couple of items. First thing we want to import is unit test. Unit test is a library that's part of the Python package that will allow you to run unit tests. The next thing we need to import is actually the, this particular program. Now, one of the things you'll notice is this unit test is a Python file. It's probably saved with .py, but there's no .py here when you do an import statement. So when we want to import another program, we do the same thing. It's math functions. There is no .py. Okay, notice, we don't want to add the .py, and that's going to import math functions right here. Now, of course, um, I, I'm going to write some code down here, and it may not all make sense. First thing you'll notice is this looks very similar to defining a function. If you've never seen this before, this is object-oriented programming, and we're creating an object called known values. And we're saying that this object is, is basically a special version of this other object called test case, which happens to be an object in the unit test module. Okay, so if that for those of you that always need to know, well, what is he typing, what he's typing, that's why. Okay. So this creates our class, and we're just going to test. The first one we're going to do is run some tests on a function that's going to give us the area of a circle. So we're going to write the name down. And we're just going to assume area circle is what everyone decided in our development team 
that this is what the function needs to be called. Usually, if you're writing software on a team, you're writing and you're developing software, there's usually a whole list of functional requirements or specifications which, which has the names of all the different functions or methods and what are the uh, inputs and then even what could be the expected outputs. So we're going to assume that's all been done and that's what we decided to call it. So we're going to create um, a test for this function called area of circle, which we haven't even written yet. This is test driven development. We already know if we're going to get the area of circle, we, we know what the formula should be. We can guess what the output should be as well. But there are going to be a couple things that we need to look for. First thing we're going to do is we're going to write a test and we're just, oops, I did not mean to do that. We're going to write a test that's just, let's just input the value of 10. It's a very easy one to figure out what that's going to look like. A uh, couple things you might want to remember is the formula for area of a circle is just pi and it's r squared, right? So I'll just write it like this. Um, there's your function, pi times radius squared, okay? And so we know what that's going to be. So we're going to write uh, a, a, basically a test here. We're going to define the test. Every test should, I would say, begin with test underscore because it's a test. Then we're going to write, I recommend you do it as test, the name of the function or method you are testing, and what you're testing for. And it's going to be a long definition. Test area circle for 10 radius. And then what you do is you write this little word keyword self. Okay, Self just means that this known values is what's going to be running the test. That's all you need to know at this point. All right, so what this test is going to do is we're going to capture the results of the function. And then we're going to check for expected output. Okay. And so we're going to capture that with some variables. So in order to capture the results of the function, we're going to write a word called we're going to write a variable called result. Let's say result equals and it's math functions. Remember, we imported math functions. And math functions is going to have the function called area circle. So we're going to put a dot. We're going to write area circle. And then we're going to put 10 as the input. So we're going to give it an input of 10. And then we're going to check for expected output. And we're going to use self again. Remember, it's the known values that's doing this. So we're going to put a dot. And look at all of the different methods that are available for the test case. So we're going to do a and what's called an assert equal. Assert equal. Okay, and then the way it runs is you're going to write what's expected, and then you're going to write the result. Okay, in fact. Not only that, but I'm going to go ahead and add this one little feature here, expected equals, and then we can write what the expected value will be. Now, before we write it, we know what the formula is, but we have to be careful how we test this, because if we write a faulty test, in other words, if I say expected is 23, well, then this test will give us no valuable information, right? because that's not what's expected when you have a radius of 10. So the question becomes, how do you test it? It's a simple math, and you could write the math out, but you're a human, and you might be unreliable. We could try the calculator, and let's go ahead and try it on the calculator. Um, and notice, I already set my calculator to be scientific, so I've got pi right here. So I can already write pi here, and then I can multiply pi by the radius squared. So that's 10 times 10, hit equal. And we can see here, well, it's 314.159. We got this big string of digits, right? That's so irrational, that pi. Anyway, um, moving along. So we can copy this, and that could be the expected. But the question is, does the calculator give us what Python would give us. And for that reason, we probably want to make sure it's doing what Python does for us. 
So I've already gone into the shell and tested out some inputs using the writing the function out this way. I could also put, um, so let's go ahead and we'll do r equals 10. So we set radius to 10. And we're going to put this formula and we hit enter. And that's the results we get there. And we'll compare it to the calculator. That is not the same. This one ends at 9.3. And this one ends like way after. Okay, so it's using, it's carrying out further digits. So is this the answer we're looking for? Probably. But let's just go ahead and try it R times R, run it that way, getting the same answer. So the thing about it is someone it's somewhere has to determine what is the expected result. We're going to do it as Python, not as the calculator. And you notice expected equals, we got that number here, and we got expected, that's what we're trying to get. Result is what running this line of code gives us. So when we give it 10, is the result the same as what we expected? And that's the basis of a unit test. We have one unit test. There's one more piece. When we write a class and we're going to run our unit test, we need to be able to run it and run all the test cases here. All right, in the next part here, what we're going to do is we need to run the test. Now we have the class uh, defined here but we need to find a way to get it to actually run. And so we're going to do this little thing that you may or may not have seen. All right, we're going to do if, and we're going to put name is equal to, and then in quotes, main. If name is equal to main, then what we want to do is run the test. In order to do that, we just type unit test dot main. And let's just go ahead and uh, test it out to see if that's going to work. Now let me just show you something beforehand because I, I want to just point it out. When we go to run it, we have this pi cache suddenly appeared. That was not there before we tried to run this. Let's run it again. Here we go. Now it says unit testing, attribute error, module, math functions has no attribute area circle. That's because there's no function called area circle. So we're going to fix that. I'm going to fix it in a way that fails the test. We're going to write our function area circle radius and we're just going to return false just because we can. I'm going to save my changes. Don't forget to save your changes whenever you do this. I'm going to run it again and this time now it also runs a test and notice it says assertion error. We have a new error this time. And it's this number is not equal to false. We want these two to be the same. So, of course, we could cheat a little bit. And we could just write out this answer. There's nothing to say you can't do that, right? So we could run it. Oops, sorry. So I saved my changes. Run it again. Now, look, I ran one test and it's okay. Look at that. You know what? I got this program to work. Well, it's no better than a broken clock that's correct twice a day. Actually, it's worse because it's only correct once. Um, so this is not going to do. So one of the things we want to do is make sure we're testing for more outputs with different inputs. So we're going to write a couple of these. Notice I just copied and pasted it out. I'm going to do a radius of 2. And I'm going to go back to my Python code to see what I tested for 2. And notice this is the output we received. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put that for expected. I'm going to pass it to. By the way, writing tests is just as important um, testing your tests. You want to make sure that eventually everything works right. So we're going to go ahead and test it again. And now watch what happens. Now we ran two tests, but we failed one. Okay. So this is telling us in this case, this is not right. We're not getting the correct one. And notice it says what test ran it. It was test area circle for two radius. That was incorrect. So now we got to keep working on this area circle. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable called area. We're going to go ahead and write our function in. And we're going to do our math.py, and you might go, hmm, he's missing something here. That's okay. Let's just assume we're, we just know what this is what it's supposed to do. So we write radius, we put exponent 2, 
and then we do return area. We think, hey, everything's working just fine. I saved my changes. I run the tests, and wha-bam, uh-oh. Now I failed two tests when I try to run it, okay? And it says name math is not defined. Name math is not defined. Well, guess what I forgot to do? I forgot to import math. You see why unit testing can be helpful, right? So I import math, run it again. This time I ran two tests and I'm okay. So then the question becomes like how many tests are enough? And that's a really important question that I can't necessarily answer today. But what I can answer is you want to test for a, a variety of different inputs. If it's a simple mathematical calculation, you might want to just test, you know, come up with a certain number you're going to test that just, you know, okay, this, this gives us a pretty good idea of how, you know, whether this is working or not. Um, as your functions get more complex, you're going to want to write other tests. We'll save that for another day, but I'm going to add one final test, giving it 500 as the input. And so this time we're going to call it, and by the way, don't forget to change your unit test names. If you don't change them, that's not going to benefit anyone because you won't be able to know which, which test failed. Okay, so I've added my other test, and let's run it one more time. And at this point, I have three tests. They're all okay. Now, on other tutorials, we'll talk about other kinds of unit tests, like how do you test for different kinds of conditions, but at least this will get you going for now. And I'll leave you with the code um, down here, and you can just pause it if you want to double-check.